Welcome to the Accidental Experts Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Hamilton. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a child and family therapist. I have been in practice for over 15 years, and I'm also a mom of four. So I know the challenges both professionally and personally. I'm so glad that you're here today to grow your parenting toolbox. Please come as you are and be ready to learn. My goal is to make you the accidental expert so that you can raise healthy humans. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're here today. Today, we're going to be talking to Rachel Sullivan, and she's going to help us with managing our technology as parents, because a lot of the conversation is around teens. But today, we're going to focus on our technology usage. With that, let's get to Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk about this topic of parental technology usage, because I think sometimes we forget about this part. We're so focused on the teen usage, which is an important topic, but we sometimes forget our part in this. Yes, absolutely. And we are a key part in modeling what technology use looks like. So I'm excited to talk about it today. Okay, so let's start with just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I am a married mom of four. So we've got kids um, from 13 to 24 at this point, three granddaughters. And so definitely managing technology just as a as a person. And then also, you know, as a parent is something that is important to me. Uh, and I do that on a personal level. And then also on a professional level, uh, my, what I call my day job is as a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified family life educator. So I spend a lot of time talking about all things, family and a uh, couple and just kind of system health. So excited to be here for this today. Yes, this is so great. Okay. So With that, let's, and we mentioned, you know, technology is just this hot topic that is being talked about a lot of buzz around teen technology usage. Mm -hmm. What are we learning about the negative impacts of technology? Yeah. So this is a really hard topic because there's a lot of divided thoughts on this right now, but the research is coming back pretty clear that the usage of technology in teens, especially when they start that earlier, kind of in that preteen phase, is having a pretty consistent negative impact on things like social emotional health, as well as um, just kind of well-being long-term and that brain development. And so those pieces are pretty scary because it's such a norm for kids to have you know, access to technology these days. And so the monitoring it piece, the monitoring, the amount of usage is really important. Yeah. Well, and I think even when we, even before we had some good data on this, I think as just a person myself, when I notice that the more time that I'm on technology, the less positive I feel. A thousand percent. Yes. Right. So, so even if it's not research-based, a lot of this is about like, how do we feel? feel, Yes. Yes. I definitely noticed that when COVID kicked off, uh, you know, we were kind of forced to disconnect from so many of the external social engagements. We were typical, Mm -hmm. you know, like engaging in on the weekends. And so that left people with phones, you know? And so uh, about three or four months into that, I really had to stop myself and go following everything that's going on right now is not doing anything except causing all this activation in my nervous system. And so I had to, as an adult, set some time limits on you know apps on my phone and really just choose to put that down and do something else. And it was, it was crucial. And I have kept that up to, you know, all the way through today, because being able to figure out how I felt in that space without the technology was a really good reminder for me. Yeah. I mean, that's such a good point. I, my husband and I, during COVID also, we, the news, right? Like it was like blowing up and all the stuff. And it was like, I I mean, I, we are in crisis, right? Like it it is. Yes. Okay. But like amplifying it every day, all day, 27,000 messages about this. Plus like friends and family are talking about, I mean, it was like, so we stopped doing news like on the TV and also on our phones. Yes. I, it was like, 
a breath of fresh air for me. Like it was like, oh, I can actually breathe because I don't feel like I'm being inundated with all this stuff. And, and we've kept that up to date. And it was funny the other day I had a patient mom who was asking me something and she was like, yeah, you heard about that story. And I was like, actually, I I have no idea. So sorry. Like, and it's, I mean, I know that there's a point of being, you know, updated on things that are happening but most of the news is just like so negative and even social media right like I think when I think about how I feel and that's it is hard to balance this part right and so I think yes we have research saying that it does impact teens well I mean we know that as parents but we know that it impacts us too yeah it impacts us right (laughs) and it impacts our little kids like at our house and this may be not something this is not something that everybody does but we do not do ipads or technology for my little kids and um like they can watch tv or like we'll play together or something like that but but they do not have an ipad and um that is just because really I experienced that with my first, when he was on it, it was like a monster getting off of it. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like if that's what this is like, no way. Right. And so my five-year-old, this was uh, several months ago, she came home from school and she was like, mom, did you know that there are families that have iPads that they play on every day? And I was like, yeah, baby, I did. (laughs) And, and she was like, that's crazy. And I was like, why is that crazy? And she goes, because ours are only for vacation. And like, we use them like when we're driving someplace or on a plane, like it's not like we don't have them, but it just, and even in those times, like we were coming back from a trip and um, my kids were just like really elevated and had the iPads. And my husband's like, when are we off of this? And I was like, as soon as we get to the door, these guys are gone, right? Like, because yeah. it just is really hard. So I think, you know, it's like, yes, there's research and people can say, oh, that's not really true. But I think it's also just like looking at paying attention, our yes. own behavior and our kids own behavior, right? Like absolutely that part is, or what do they do when they don't have it? Like, that's another thing to pay attention to. If they're antsy, then we have an imbalance there, right? If they cannot be without it. And I noticed that about myself. It's like, when I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my phone down. I'm not going to really be on my phone today. Sometimes at first I'm like, oh my gosh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? And then, (laughs) yes, you're right. And then, and then as I go on, I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. Like, I don't even know where my phone is. Like, I'm so glad because I'm like living in this moment. So why do you think having a healthy balance with technology is so hard? Like, why is this hard for us? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things here. I think number one, uh, the way that our brains are wired, right, really is that the technology is designed to poke at and stimulate those pleasure sensors in our brain. And so the apps that we're getting on, the shows that we're watching, um, the news that we're consuming, it is all designed to do exactly that, right? To really stimulate those those parts of our brain. And the more that we experience that, the more that we're drawn to, to, to get that, right? And so stepping away from that is really challenging when so many facets of technology are designed to stimulate our brain in that way. And so Um, You know, I think that there's that part of it. And then I think and see a lot of this peer pressure to be up to date on those things, right? Um, Like you shared earlier with the client, I will have people come in and say, oh, did you see such and such? Or, oh my gosh, I downloaded this app or I'm watching this show and I stay off of as much as is humanly possible. And that's hard, right? People are like, oh, why? You know, and there's this uh, almost automatic negative assumption that something must be wrong with you if you don't engage in and are not on social platforms. And so I think that that peer pressure piece is challenging too. And as humans, we're designed for connection. We really don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're on the outskirts. And so balancing that technology sometimes looks like being out of the loop. What can That can feel really uncomfortable in social settings. Absolutely. I'm so glad you touched on this part about like the phones, the shows, the news, right? All of social media is designed to keep us coming back, right? Which is 
Exactly. I mean, it's like, that's exactly what they want. Like they yes. want us to keep coming back. And so they have hacked our brain. And I Absolutely. think that part is so critical to recognize. And I don't know if anybody else is out, out there is like this, or if you're like this, but like, I, I don't like people to control me. Right. No. Like I follow the Same. rules. Right. <laughs> but, but I don't want people to control me. And so like this idea that people are out there to like mess with me and mm -hmm. like control what I'm doing kind of makes me angry. Absolutely. And, and so, so it's like, even that I'm like, Oh, like bug off, like totally yeah. like that. Like, like, oh, that's what me? you designed it for. <laughs> Let me figure out a way to do the opposite. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> like my teenage brain is coming on. Like you're not going to control me. No way. Um, <laughs> <what> I want. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's so true of like, I don't like, I think about like, just, you know, like being conscious of like addictions run in my family. And so like, yeah. I am thoughtful about that part. And so then when I see something that can lead to an addiction and I'm, I'm not perfect on this. There are times where yeah. I'm like on my phone and my husband's like, Hey, hello. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Like, and I'm like, Oh shoot. Right. Like, and, and so I am not perfect at this. I, sure. I think there are times where like, I find myself engaging and even if it's work stuff, right. Like my kids are like, do you have to do something on your computer today? And it's like, I'm doing billing or I am doing something that's like I, ha I need to do, but it's also like my kids want me to be present. Right. Absolutely. And so I think that's the hard balance of like, yes, our technology holds all of this stuff. Like it has my grocery list and it has connection to our family that doesn't live in town. And it has the ability to take pictures of my kids and also, you know, look at social media and see what my friends are doing and also write, like read a book and also listen to podcasts that I listen to, right? Like it has all of these things right at my disposal, which is yes. lovely, but also can make us so dependent, right? Yes, and absolutely. so reliant on something. And I was thinking the other day about like my grocery list, you know, we use Alexa to make our grocery list. And so then it's like, it's so easy because then I don't have to worry about, you know, back in the day where you wrote it down and you're like, ah, shoot, I didn't bring the list. Like, right. Text me a picture of our grocery list. Right. <laughs> Anyways. But so, I mean, like that part is great, but then also it's like, I mean, I can put it on paper. Like, sure. And so it's like balancing. I don't know that that's necessary, but it's just like this idea of like, are we being thoughtful about the pieces? And I read this book years yeah. ago. I don't know if you've um, read it, but it's how to break up with your phone. And that, that one. it's, it, it, I liked it because the first half of it is just educating you on this part of like what technology is trying to do, what the companies mm. are trying to do to just give you the information. Right. And then the second part is like, okay, if you buy into this, right, if you understand this information and, and you see the value or the potential negative side effects, then here's a plan to get away from your phone. And so when I was reading that, I remember one of the things she's like, hey, in the future of, of this book, I want you to know that I'm going to ask you to put your phone down for 24 hours where you're not going to, you're going to turn your phone off, right? Like you're going to let the important people know, and you're going to be off of your phone, off your computer, right? For 24 hours. And I was like, I'm doing it today. And my husband's like, I thought you just started reading this book. I'm like, I've turned it off. Like, clearly if I can't do it, I'm addicted, right? Like, and so it was like one of those things where it's like, I'm in it. But I like that idea of like just detoxing from my yes. phone. It's hard. It was really hard. At first it was like, oh my gosh, where's my phone, right? But then as the day went on, I was like, I'm surviving just fine without this thing. Sure. And there was a time when we did. Yes. Even yes. in our lives. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So and so we know we can do that, but it mm -hmm. is hard because of how we're kind of wired. Okay. So what do you think parents need to be aware of when it comes to their own technology usage? So obviously we've talked about the complications and why we understand, but like what, what should we be aware of as parents who are modeling this for our kids? Yeah. I think that one of the big things is they really do see what we're doing. And I think that we are, most of us are using some sort of technology more than we really realize. Mm -hmm. And our kids are a really good mirror of that. Right. And so as we're thinking about how we want to show up in our lives and how we want our kids to use technology, um, you know, really checking in with ourselves about how much are we using that technology is a good starting place for that because it's 
really not fair for me to say, Hey kid, here's the limit that you have on your device for today and, or your total screen time. And then I'm on mine unlimited. Right. Mm -hmm. And not, not doing anything to engage this kid. Not that I have to keep them entertained all the time. Right. But it's like, I can't say, Hey, don't be on there. And then I'm still on it and on it and on it, even if that's for work, right? Like there's Mm -hmm. got to be some limitations. And so Mm -hmm. I think monitoring that and kind of stripping it back to knocking the necessities out and kind of time blocking that. And so if that means you get yourself one show or, you know, um, 30 minutes on your favorite social media app or whatever that is, and then moving on and allowing your brain to engage in something else. Yeah. Well, and I think earlier you're talking about the chemicals that get released. Mm -hmm. I mean, dopamine in the phone is so that's our reward center, right? So we want that feeling. So we get a notification. It gives us dopamine, right? It feels good. And so it makes sense why it's hard to break away from something that is our reward center, right? Like you don't want to, but to think about there's other ways to get that reward center also stimulated, right? That are things that are like helping us to show up in our kids' lives, like playing a card game or playing a board game or coloring with them. Even if you're not coloring the same thing, just next to them. I think our kids just so desperately want our attention, right? And, And they use the device to basically entertain themselves when we're not available, right? Like, so if, if the technology becomes our babysitter, we just need to think about, is that what we want for our kids to like, look back and be like, yes, I got to spend so much time on my iPad. Sure. Like that was really good. Or do we have other goals for our kids? Right. Do we, we want them to be playing outside and connecting to peers and connecting to us and, remembering how we always did this one activity or going outside and doing chalk or whatever it is, right. Yes, of like yeah. that connection of like, I know that for me, I want my kids to think about when they think back on their childhood of like, I loved how I just got to spend time with my mom. Yes. It wasn't like we did anything big necessarily. Right. Like, yeah, it wasn't this have... giant vacation every weekend yes. or anything, but no, yeah. yeah. I mean, my kids have gotten some cool experiences, but like, I want them to just like, be like, you know, like I got to do some fun stuff with my mom and, and that's like, and connect to me. And also I think we're building this up also with little kids for our teenage years. And if we're not showing up when they're little, how do we expect that they're going to come to us when they're big? Yes. And helping them when they're little is a key part of, you know, if we're balancing that technology use in ourselves when our littles are little Mm -hmm. and helping them to find ways that they can have fun that don't involve, um, you know, some, we call them electronics because it's like, sometimes it's a screen, but sometimes that is just like music or something that's kind of going on in the background. Right. And so Mm -hmm. anything that requires electricity, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. we need time during the day that what we're doing doesn't involve electricity, right? So whether that's a book or whether that's a board game or whether that's time outside or, you know, sometimes that's a nap or a walk or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, absolutely. Finding those other things that actually do build that, uh, you know, release of happy chemicals are kind of tool belt for those items that can lead to that because ultimately long-term those things are are much healthier for us than Absolutely. whatever we're getting from, cause it's so volatile. The technology piece is so volatile, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's somebody else kind of controlling that part for you, right. Versus yeah. you kind of choosing, cause you can lose track of time on technology, so, right? Like you're yes. in it and then you're scrolling or you're watching something. And I mean, I don't know if any of you during COVID was the first time I saw that the the TV would say, are you still watching? Like, I don't know what platform it is. And it's like, yes, I'm still watching. Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) And then it was like, uh, maybe this is a sign to take a break. Right. Like, but it was so funny because it was like, I had never noticed that part before, but then I was it like kind of, I don't think that was their intention to be like, go do something else. But, um, it did spur that in me to like, just be thoughtful about that part. Okay. So, Can you speak to this part? We're kind of talking about modeling, but in early Mm -hmm. childhood development, we know a lot about the importance of us like 
being there and modeling things and how we're regulating and how we're doing expression and all these things to connect to our kids. Can you talk about why it is important for parents to be aware of this stage of early childhood development, especially like babies, they're even watching Mm -hmm. us, right? To do those facial expressions and then how that can be negatively impacted by technology. Yeah. So as we were talking about earlier, those early years are so crucial to the development, right? And so the things that the kids are seeing really set the stage for that. And, you know, so if we are constantly on some kind of device, then these littles aren't getting, and when I say littles, let's define that as like six and under. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Really uh, all those ages up until getting into school. And then I'm like, kids for me are going to be in that kind of like six going into seven until that preteen phase. And both of those age demographics are really, really vulnerable to what parents have going on. And so as we're thinking about setting our kids up for best success during those early childhood development years, we've really got to be mindful of how our being on technology shapes their brain, right? And so if we're constantly getting our positive feedback loop, or we're constantly engaging in social media through our phone, they just learn that that's what's normal, right? Mm -hmm. The flip side of that coin is if we are taking them out for a walk and we're exploring nature or we're doing something, you know, we're going to go play in the Creek or go to the swimming pool or, you know, visit the library or whatever that looks like, then the brain is expanded on the potential things that can happen, right? And so those opportunities that we get to engage in something with our kids that isn't technology related are super critical for helping with so many of those aspects, right? When we go out and we're doing chalk and we're mixing colors or they fall off their bike, there's these parts of their brain that get the opportunity to get developed, right? Problem solving skills and those socio, um, you know, emotional skills that they don't get to the same degree, if at all, with technology, right? And so even if we're the one that's on technology and they're just kind of sitting around waiting for us, they're missing out on the opportunity for those really critical parts of their brain to develop. And there's a lot of research that shows that there's a window of opportunity for some of that development, right? So while the brain, it does have this neuroplasticity and can grow for forever, there's a lot of things that develop primarily, if not only in those early years. And so we don't want to lose that window on a social media fad that's going to be gone, but our kids are dealing with their brain for forever. Yeah. So I think that was really impactful. And I don't know who did the research on this. So I apologize for that. But there was a study that I saw that was talking about parents and having their phone in front of their face and how you miss all the expression on their face. And that helps our kids to figure out how to regulate. Like they're looking to us for guidance. And so something scary happens and we're on our phone, then they're going to have to figure right it out all by themselves and yeah, impacts that it, attachment mm-hmm. yes it impacts our attachment but it also like impacts their resilience because if we're like a calming presence to that like hey you're okay we got this like let me see where did you get hurt like and you're tuning to that part i guess attachment but then also they're like okay like they're building this exactly. ability to mm-hmm. like believe that they can do this and that's yeah, that, such like, an important from a little age yes mm-hmm. yes right and and i think you know the other thing that has been bouncing around in my head as we're talking is like sometimes i find that it's hard to just be right especially for this like all of the kids that I see, they'll all like talk about, you know, in my clinic, but then also, you know, in the world is that like, it's hard to just be quiet, like to do something that doesn't involve a lot of stimulation, right. Mm -hmm. To just like, to like turn everything off and be, it's like, you have to like plan it, but I don't think maybe our brains were made to be like that. I think it's, it's good for us to get in our thoughts, right. And not be looking for outside guidance, maybe, but internal Um, And that is really, really hard when we're spending so much time on technology or anything that's electronic, right? We don't have Mm -hmm. time to think it's not, it's, it's hard to be quiet. Not that you have to be totally quiet, right? Like you can be in nature or you can be having a conversation, but it's like, if you also have music going and you know, like all these. Yeah. Your brain has got multiple inputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard to be in that, but that's such an important part. Yes. Yeah. Just being absolutely. 
Yeah. And that's an area that I'm trying to grow because it's, it is hard for me to even like, I love to read actual paper books. Physical books. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love them. Yes. I, and I, I, it, but it's like, you know, it's sometimes hard because I feel like we're running to a thousand different things. And so it's like, I'm in the car, sh- um, shuttling kids from one place to the next, or I'm driving to work or whatever. And so it's like, I love audiobooks and, and podcasts to be able to like take that material in, but I'm like, I've really been like, okay, no, I want to like read this book. Like mm-hmm. I want to have the paper. I want to like on. highlight the stuff, right? Like when it's like a psychology book or whatever, where yeah. it's like, I just really like, I miss that part because then I forget a lot of the things that are said that are really meaningful. And while you're driving, you can't like be like writing it down. Right. And and there's no highlighting. So I'm like, just in my own life, trying to figure out how to do that piece better. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what can we do? How do we find this balance? Like we've talked about all the complications and we are busy and all these things and technology is made to kind of involve us. So how do we do this part? What things can we do to help ourselves as parents balance? Yeah. So one of the places I start with this is just, first of all, like a grace check, (laughs) because I think that there's so much information And there's so much stigma and there's so much negativity around everything, (laughs) right? That any, any chance that we get to kind of give ourselves some grace, especially in an area that we're trying to kind of grow or evolve, right? Make ourselves a little bit healthier. I think we've got to start with grace and just go, it's been what it's been up until now. And I can't go back and change any of that. But as I use that insight from where I've been and how I felt doing whatever the thing is in this case, technology use, right? If I feel like I've been consuming too much technology, I want to stop and just sort of give myself a grace check and go, it's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's me being mindful about where I've been. And as I take this information and use it for my betterment moving forward, I'm only really going to be able to do that if I've got an overload of self-compassion and go, I'm doing the best that I can. Mm -hmm. And so then as we move forward in that space, I think kind of next is this uh, prioritization, right? What's important. And for me, uh, I know, you know, having two kids that are adults already, my 13 year old, we've got five years left with him. And there are days where I wake up and the thought of, of the house being empty in five years makes my guts just be like, Oh, you know? And so that time flies by so fast. And so on those days where I know my kid has come in and he's talked to me a few times and I'm just scrolling because I've been at the office for however many hours this week, I've got to remember that those are his little bids for connection. Right. And so whatever it is I'm looking at is not more important to me, right. than him coming in and trying to connect with me. And it's probably about a topic that isn't my favorite thing to discuss, (laughs) but he's my favorite thing. So if he wants to discuss something, then I want to discuss that thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that reprioritization, I think allows us to go. It's not that I don't also want some time to just mindlessly scroll, but if my kid's going to go to bed at this time, can I do that later? Or can I do that on my lunch break? And so just kind of going, what's the most important thing for me to spend some time on today. And so if that's a board game or that's a walk or that's a whatever with, you know, my kid or my spouse or whatever, then prioritizing that and allowing those other things to come first. And I think when we do that and we're really consistently checking in with ourselves as we do that, we're going to find that the way that we feel engaging in those human connection type of activities, whatever they are, is going to be more fulfilling and peaceful than anything that we consumed on a screen. Yeah. Well, and I think I love that you brought up peaceful because I think peace, having peace within us is so, we don't talk about it very much, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an emotion that we are is, is really like publicized in the media and whatever. Like it's, it's not really a conversation topic, but like, I think (laughs) like people aren't talking, like, I just want to find peace. It's like, I want to be happy or whatever. And like, and I think, but, but to me, I think that peace might be exactly what we're looking for. Like, and, and I think this idea of 
checking in, right? Like, and, and for me, I'm all about writing stuff down because like, if I write it down, then I'm more accountable to it. And then I can go back to it. It's kind of my like resource. So it's like, okay, what are like, let's say there's 10 things that I have, right. That are, are these, these, um, demands for my time. And it's, and then I write them down in the order of what is important. Right. And then it's like, okay, checking in on, every day, like, how did I do on this? What do I, what's one thing I want to do better tomorrow or what was something I'm going to give myself some accolades for? Like I did really good at this because I think that encouragement, and especially if our partner is noticing like, Hey, you did a really good job at this. So in including them in that, even if that doesn't mean that they're doing it too, right? but sometimes if we're modeling this of like, we're putting our phone down and they say, Hey, have you seen that thing I sent you on whatever social media platform? And you're like, no, I haven't been on my phone today. That might be like, huh, right? Like those more of the moments that we have the huh kind of thing where they're thinking and maybe, you know, you say it 5,000 times and it's nothing, but maybe it's the 5,001 time, right? Like yes. that, that is like, oh, I mean, like, or this is like a habit, like you're never looking at your phone and you're like, oh yeah. Like I, I just like realized that I'm going to reprioritize because you yes. and our kids are way more important to me than what people are doing outside of our home. Right. Like yes, ultimately yeah. I can't control those people and there's nothing I can do. And yes, it makes me feel connected, but like, I don't know about you, but like texting with a friend makes me feel way more connected or talking on the phone or being with them in person, all of those more and more connected than looking Absolutely. at their story on whatever platform. For sure. Yeah. I think more often than not, people end up feeling, um, you know, some degree of like comparison or sadness or something on, you know, that kind of negative end of the spectrum of emotions rather than the positive end of the, commo- of the emotion scale. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, taking that, I will often see somebody's story and then, but send them a text message like, Oh my gosh, your trip looks so amazing. I'd love to get together for coffee and talk about it. Right. If if there's somebody that's in the area and if not, it's like, Oh my gosh, you know, send me a Marco Polo or, you know, uh, (laughs) I want to hear about your thing in more than just the 30 seconds that I got on your story. So. Yes. Well, and I think so something funny on that. So my friends that are close to me know that I do not do social media. So if there's something that happens in their life that they want me to know about, like, and it's been this way for years that they have to send it to me. They'll be yeah. like, Hey, <laughs> cause you know, the, the rest of the world, it appears is all learning through the social media platforms, but then they're like, Bryce, also Here's there. the picture of our trip, <laughs> right? Or whatever, because I'm not going to see it. Cause like enough times they'd be like, Oh, did you see my whatever? And I'm like, Oh no, I didn't know that you went to wherever. Like I didn't yes. know. I didn't know. Or I didn't, you know, cause you didn't tell me. And yes. so they, they've like started being like, here are the pictures <laughs> because you're not going to see them. Right. Like, and it's not that they're offended. They just want me to be included, which I think means even more right yes. to have that personal connection. Because like, I don't know about you, but like, Sure. It feels good when somebody likes something. Right. But it feels better when somebody is like talking to me about it. Like when I have like a real connection. And also I think, you know, social media is great and teens will be like, oh, well, I play video games with my friends or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but could you call that person at two o'clock in the morning because you are in crisis? Something happened. Your dog got out. You need to go to the hospital, whatever. And, and chances are, that's not what's going to happen in those right. relationships because, you know, I have friends that I can call in the middle of the night and be like, Hey, I need to talk about this. Or like, I, I remember when I was pregnant with my last uh, baby, I was like, Hey, I like, I need you to come watch my kids. Cause we've got to go to the hospital. Like I need to check this out. Like, and, and so they did it. We, I think it was midnight when yeah. they came over. Right. And so it was like, but do you have those people? Like those are the right. relationships that are really probably fulfilling us versus us seeing something on social media. Yeah. So I think- 10,000 people that you're connected with on social media, but you've got like three people that are really in your circle. Yeah. yeah and those are the people you can count on, right? Like those are the th- relationships that are going to really matter. Not the yeah. 10,000 because you can't keep up with that many people. Like it's oh not gosh, possible. No, and not. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I, I'm like, I have a hard time keeping up with five people, right? Like I, I've got six or six of us total in our house. So five of those people plus five people outside of my house, like that is like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> that's <is> my max. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I am there. But so I think what I hear us saying is like, be thoughtful 
right? Yes. Take the time to think about where do you want to spend your time? Then be like checking in with yourself about Absolutely. like, how did I do on that? And and it doesn't have to be just at the end of the, your day. Maybe you pick lunch. Like, how have I been doing? Because you can always adjust, right? Absolutely. Like it is a continual adjustment. And yes. some days you may be overindulging, let's say, right? Like you may be really into whatever, and maybe it's work related stuff, because I know that I have to do social media stuff for work too. And so it's like, I might be over in that, but then like thinking about like, how do I feel? What, like, is yes. there ways that I can delegate this task to somebody else? And like, that's things that I've been conscious of, or like, is this filling my bucket? Do I feel better after this 30 minutes on social media than I did before? Right. So like, for me, it's like those numbers, like, I'll be like, okay, how's my mood right now? I'll be like, okay, like I'm, I'm feeling six, right? Like, or I'm feeling eight or whatever, like on my happiness scale. And then I get on social media. And then at the end of that, I'm like, I noticed that my numbers are lower. Like I don't, yeah. or, or they didn't get uh, like better. Like if I started and I'm like, I'm at a four, I did not improve. Right. Like that didn't help no. me to feel any better. And so like that self research, right. Like we're doing our own research study on ourselves. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. Right. Like we have this information. It's good to take in mind, but like, let's be our own research study, right. Absolutely. Like candidate where we're saying, okay, do I feel better? And then I think also talking to our kids about that. Uh, sometimes my kids will be like, Hey, whatever. And they're like, can we do this thing? And I need my phone to, to use that thing. Like, can we look at something for target for this birthday party gift or whatever? And I'm like, Oh, I'm not using my phone right now. And like, when I first started saying that they're like, what? Like, just get your phone. It's like right over there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like taking a break. Cause like, I want to be here. I'm like, you yeah. know, I want to be in front of you and doing whatever you need to, like, we can talk about it. Like, I'd love to talk about what kind of guests we can get and like, look at later, but I'm just not using my phone right now. And like yeah. having that restraint is also good because, you know, like sometimes I want the candy, but I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, I'm resisting, right? Like I'm yeah. giving myself a break to see, do I really need that? Yeah. Um, and so I think it's also teaching our kids how to do that. We're modeling all these qualities for our kids. And sometimes it sucks that as a parent, we have to do these things in order to True. teach our kids how to do it. But it's also lovely. Like that means yes. we have so much impact. So I really try to focus on that positive piece of like, this is meaningful. Like this is yeah. teaching my kids to be a good humans yes. and helping me to be a good human. Um, but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because that regulation piece and the, that resistance and the choosing something that does feel healthier and more peaceful, that is not always the option that we want to choose in the moment. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to say about how, like the why, like when I pick up my phone, I like try to be like, okay, why, why? And like, you know, how, when, why, where, whatever, like, yes. I'm like why am I picking it up? And could I do this later? And sometimes it's no, right? Like I, I've been trying to order coffee. There's like a place that I love um, for coffee that we live in Kansas City, but um, it's out of Tennessee. And so like their coffee is the best. And so I order coffee, but it, like I'm getting low and I'm like, can I do this later? No, because like, I'm going to be out of coffee. I mean, I could, <laughs> right? But it's like, window. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have coffee and then, yeah, that's going to be a new dynamic, but, but I'm, I'm trying to facilitate. And then sometimes I have the conversation out loud. I'll be like, why am I picking up my phone right now? Just to model that part. And, and, you know, my kids think it's normal because I do these things all the time, but I, at first your kids might be like, why are you having this conversation? Right. But then to just say like, I'm trying to be like thoughtful about what I'm doing and is this the right time? Then they're like, Oh, that's good. And I sometimes see my kids being like, why am I choosing to play with this bluey dollhouse? Because it, it feels really good right now. I really, yeah, yeah, I do need to do it right now. <laughs> like, and I'm like, yes, I, I love, love this. When they're like modeling <laughs> those things. Okay, so as a parent, you are working to balance too. So like, how are you doing it? What are the the tricks that you're using? You talked uh, earlier yeah. about setting times on your phone. What else is working for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. So especially as my kids have gotten older and they're in that, you know, everybody's a teenager now. And so I think that, that it, this particular stage of life has really required me to to double down on my efforts to balance technology because 
they are so naturally inclined at this age to gravitate toward that. And so I've got to be so intentional about not being on my phone and, or my computer. Right. And so I actually took, um, it's probably March of this year. And I had multiple aspects of life that I was trying to keep up with in different ways, right? Like my social media planner was kind of partially on a spreadsheet and partially, um, on like a paper calendar thing. And then, you know, I would do this particular aspect of business over here. And then I would, you know, print all these things that I had to review for work over here. And, um, I do love to read. I swap back and forth on my Kindle to a paper book because, prices. And so Kindle Unlimited is beautiful. Um, and so I have had to kind of figure out that balance. One of the ways that I did that was just sort of streamlining my processes. And so I bought myself a Kindle scribe to be able to put like five of the things that took a lot of my daily time and put them into one place. So I can carry that one, what that one device around mm -hmm. and knock everything out in a fraction of the time, which even though I'm still using technology allowed me this extra time to be present because I'm not having to carry around like a wheelbarrow worth of things to knock out all these different tasks that I needed to do. And so I think that balancing often requires, again, that reprioritization, but also figuring out like what's out of balance. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like, my processes are not efficient. The way that I'm trying to get life done the must haves, right? The non-negotiables. I'm not doing that as efficiently as I could. And so that really required me to make that process more efficient. So then it opened up that time. And then in that downtime honoring, you know, my space, there are some nights where I get home and I do have the bandwidth to like hang out and do things, but maybe the kids don't that night. And so then we have a conversation around, okay, we're going to allow tonight to be kind of a veg or a free for all night, but tomorrow night we're doing game night. Right. And we'll pick out a game ahead of time and like put it on the table. So that yeah. there's this reminder that this is what we're doing tomorrow. And then there's days where we balance that with, you know, like, Hey, it's a mandatory. Everybody's going to go to the pool or go on it. We call them wheel wheeled outings, like grab your roller skates or a bike or something with wheels. And like, everybody's going out to go do this. And, you know, sometimes there's some grumbling up front, but often we go and I know I feel better and more connected to my kids mm -hmm. when we go do those things. And often we get back from those and everybody just feels refreshed. Like the energy is so much different. And so I think the balance goes back to checking in with ourselves and going, you know, how do I feel? I got home last night. I started to, I put the TV on because my brain was just done and I picked up my phone and was scrolling at the same time. And about 40 minutes into that, I was like, I feel so just heavy and like gross right now. And so my son had come down to like chat with me a few times I ended up just like turning it off, went upstairs, he got involved in, um, Legos and I just went into my room and like started cleaning some things that had been on a task list for a little while. And about an hour and a half later, I was like, Oh my God, I feel so much better just doing something other than anything to do with technology. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that checking in piece is so, so critical because we're going to be able to strike the balance when we are reading from our own selves what is out of balance. So mm -hmm. I love that. Absolutely. Okay. So this topic is hard and we do know that there are good things about Absolutely. technology, right? And, and so I think both of us are saying use technology. Yeah, totally sure. do it. Absolutely. Right. Like we're not asking you to stop and we're not going to no. stop. Right. Like, <laughs> but it's about this balance piece. So what do you want yes. parents to take away from this conversation? We've covered a lot of different bases. Yeah, I think number one is that yes, technology can be a beautiful thing. Pay attention to yourself, pay attention to your kids, see how you are feeling, how they're feeling and how they're reacting and you know, really alter the screen use around that, you know, pick the technology pieces that exemplify um, connection, right? Like if you've got a digital frame and when you're out and you're taking pictures, you know, you're on a hike with your family and that you take your phone out, but to take pictures so that you can put it over on your frame, right? Mm -hmm. um, use the technology pieces that help you get connected to your family. Talk to them about, you know, talk to yourself, but also talk to your kids about, you know, what are you getting out of that particular use of that? And then back to balancing, right? For all those 
uh, hours that you are on a screen or some sort of technology that maybe isn't a, a FaceTime call with family, you know, you need time and a half away from that on something that doesn't involve some sort of screen, right? So whether that's your kids playing with Barbies or chalk or going on a walk or playing in nature, or going to the pool or whatever, right? Balance, 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 balance. And so really being able to check in with yourselves in that space um, so that you can do that. And just going back to that grace piece, right? If you have one day where you end that and you're just like, oh, today was not in balance in any way, shape or form, right? And maybe that's your road trip day and everybody had 10 hours on screens. It's okay <laughs> yes. for you to reset tomorrow, yes. right? Tomorrow yes. is a new day. You have not messed your kids up with one day of 10 hours of, you know, straight yeah. tablet time yeah. in the car. Let tomorrow be your adventure day, you know, mm-hmm. and and then go from there. Yeah. And I love that piece of like, we haven't messed our kids up, right? Like we, yeah. we have time, even That's if they're okay. older teens, right? Like yes. we can, we can say, <laughs> we totally Hey, reset. this is, yeah. Like we're going to reset, like join me in this, right? Like, let's yes. do this together. Let's see what this is like. And at first they might be like, uh, no. Right. right. <laughs> but, but just to really encourage them on that piece of like, I'm going to do this. We can do hard things. Right. And creating times to go do stuff, like find yeah. a way to go out and do something like looking things up, even if that requires more technology used to get to the things where sure. it's like, come up with a list, right? Like and yes. have them make a list of like, what are things you want to do together? And they might be like nothing. And then, but yeah. sometimes like teenagers, it's like, like I, I get to pick. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I do. I'm like, if you're not choosing, that means you're giving me permission to choose. And sometimes I'll like come up with stuff and put things on there. And then it's like, you know, with my 12 year old, big like, and play Barbies. And he's like, and no, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I'd love some ideas. And yeah. and then normally we do like, he All can, like sudden, great ideas. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. And they have them in them. It's just that sometimes they don't want to share them, but I love this. Yes. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank this you. was like such a good conversation. I love the thoughts that you shared and I'm like thinking about how can I do more, right? Like what can I yeah. do better in balance to yes. be in a happier space with technology? So thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. This is great. Thank you. Really, truly. I mean, loved this conversation. And when you earlier were talking about being, um, doing marriage stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many topics that I feel like couples need support on with Mm -hmm. all the things. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like I'm like, I, there's like a thousand things going on in my mind. Um, so thank you really, truly for this and for having me. Thanks again, Rachel. That was all really fantastic information. I love figuring out how we can do things as parents to help be a better model for our kids. I know sometimes it's hard, but let's give ourselves grace and also figure out, like make a conscious effort to figure out what we want to do around technology versus just being hostage to what the technology companies want us to do. So make a list of what's a priority for you. Find a way to balance it. Set limitations if that makes sense for you and then reflect and see how you feel and how you did that day. With that, I will say thank you so much for your time today. Please like and subscribe, give us a rating, and also follow us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And keep the emails coming. We're loving all the topic requests to accidentalexperts at gmail.com. Have a fantastic day. Some words from our legal team. The information presented in this podcast is not intended or implied to be a substitute for appropriate professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All content, including text, graphics, images, and information contained on or available through this podcast is for general information purposes only. This podcast makes no representations and assumes no responsibility for the accuracy or information on or available through this podcast. And such information is subject to change without notice. You are encouraged to confirm any information obtained through this program with other sources and review all information regarding any condition or treatment with the appropriate professionals. What we're saying is, yes, I am a real therapist, but I'm not your therapist.